Hi and welcome to this video on getting started with the IBM blockchain platform on OpenShift. My name is Owen Osborne Walsh and I'm a junior solution architect here at Red Hat and today we'll start off with a quick presentation on what exactly the IBM blockchain platform is and why the IBM blockchain platform and OpenShift go hand in hand. And then we'll jump into a quick demonstration to show you just how easy it is to get set up and ready to start creating your own private blockchain through the use of the IBM blockchain platform operator on OpenShift. So what is the IBM blockchain platform? Well, the IBM blockchain platform aims to make it simple to deploy enterprise grade private a private blockchain that is containerized and cloud agnostic. Um, the IBM blockchain at its foundation is Hyperledger Fabric, which is the foundation for essentially developing decentralized applications with a modular architecture. Within the platform, these decentralized applications, smart contracts, certificate authorities are then containerized. And there are different container, container platforms, although in this demo and in, in this instance, we'll be discussing OpenShift. The edge that OpenShift has over its competitors as the container tool for the IBM blockchain is that it's the leading Kubernetes distribution created with enterprise security and scalability at the heart of the product. Furthermore, in this instance in particular, OpenShift also benefits from the synergy of the IBM Red Hat partnership with easy plug and play integration with IBM blockchain through the use of operators. And when deciding where to containerize your smart contracts, the cloud agnostic approach from Red Hat OpenShift means that your solution can be deployed anywhere across your choice of public cloud or on premise. So why do blockchain and Kubernetes go hand in hand? Well, the first one up is a pretty major concern for most blockchains and in fact, most applications in this day and age, and that's high availability. It is of course, you know, important to all enterprises now with differing degrees based on, you know, the context of the application. But uh, Kubernetes has already leveraged across you know, thousands of organizations to ensure a level of redundancy and availability. Within a blockchain network, redundancy is of course of high importance and you know, with considerations such as peer availability, containerizing your peers and other things like certificate authorities can ensure that resilience is built straight into the network. Standard operating environments are just as important within a blockchain deployment as with any other infrastructure deployment and using Kubernetes alongside that cloud agnostic tooling that we mentioned before can help manage your environment staying consistent um, just as they can with any other infrastructure regardless of where you want to deploy uh, your blockchain and across what you know regions or, or clouds or data centers you decide to deploy across. Finally, simplified deployments, you know, as we know, developer experience is one of the biggest factors that drives technology adoption. Um, and for many getting started with blockchain development can be daunting that, you know, due to the array of languages, frameworks, clients available to develop with, um, you know, Kubernetes basically abstracts much of that knowledge required to get started um, by packaging up elements of the blockchain networks into image files that then can be deployed and managed. So it's pretty clear that there are some great benefits to using Kubernetes when looking at uh, deploying your blockchain platform. So if we just touch now on specifically IBM blockchain and OpenShift, uh, the latest IBM blockchain platform is version 2.52 uh, at the time of making this video, and that is currently supported for OpenShift versions 4.4, 4.5, and 4.6. There is a 30 day free trial available at Red Hat Marketplace at the moment, which is what we'll be using uh, when we demonstrate this video. Um, and uh, IBM blockchain platform uh, can be deployed in any OCP cluster um, on any supported cloud or on-premise um, and those supported clouds are Azure, Google Cloud, AWS and IBM Cloud. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration we'll be actually deploying on a cluster that is within AWS. Uh, so just some quick prereqs. Um, before you want to get started, uh, you want to have the OpenShift CLI installed locally. You want to have uh, the Kubernetes uh, command line installed locally. Um, there is a caveat that each blockchain network needs its own uh, OpenShift project. So if you plan to create different uh, networks for development staging and production, uh, if you're looking at creating like an enterprise network, then you need to create a unique project for each environment. Um, and using a separate namespace essentially provides each network with separate resources um, and allows you to set you know, unique access policies for each network then on the back of that. 
Um, apart from that, there is a different requirement for storage uh, if deploying to Azure, but again, it's fairly simple. Um, there's also uh, a different way of installing if you're going to be installing in a disconnected environment, um, disconnected environment, but that can all be found in the documentation uh, in the description below. Um, and then finally, the Red Hat Marketplace operator for this demo is uh, what we'll use to uh, install the um, operator itself. So it's essential that the Red Hat Marketplace operator is already installed on the cluster. Again, if you're unsure of how to do that, then uh, if you look in the description, there'll be a document on how to install the Red Hat Marketplace operator onto your cluster and get it all connected up. Um, but that being said, that's enough of the presentation. Uh, let's jump into the demo. So to get started with this demonstration, you're going to want to log in to the OpenShift container platform uh, UI for your uh, given cluster um, and also log in uh, with the command line. Um, so if I just bring up a terminal now, I can paste the uh, OC login um, and you can see that we've logged in successfully. Now from here, admittedly, you could do this through the UI, but now that we're logged in, we may as well do it through the command line. You can create a namespace uh, dedicated for this instance of your blockchain deployment, because as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, each deployment of the IBM blockchain platform is going to need its own namespace. So we can do an OC create namespace and we'll just call it something like blockchain demo. Um, now that that's done, we can close the terminal for now. And essentially from here, we now have three options in terms of how we want to install this operator. Um, we could install it through the command line. We could install it straight through Red Hat Marketplace. Um, or in this instance, we're going to install it using Operator Hub. So we can just keep everything within um, our OpenShift cluster. So if I just go into Operator Hub and search for blockchain, we can find the IBM blockchain operator. Um, and because this cluster has been connected with the marketplace, uh, the you know marketplace is aware of the entitlement to be able to use the IBM blockchain on the free trial that I mentioned earlier. So from here, we can just install it and we'll leave everything uh, as default. But as you can see, this is you know almost identical to the options that you get from the marketplace. And we can just um, press install there and wait for the install. So we'll just come back once the install is complete and the IBM blockchain operator has installed itself on the um, cluster. So once we've seen the operator has been installed, we want to go ahead and start step one of actually deploying the operator within the namespace that we created earlier. So what we want to do is get that terminal back up while we're still logged in and just quickly check that we're in the right project. So do an OC project, we see that we're in blockchain demo, which is great. And then we want to create a new security context constraint to apply to our namespace. So the reason we need to do this is because the IBM blockchain platform requires specific security and access policies to be added to the project. Um, so we're going to go for uh, adding a new file basically locally to our machine and then apply it onto the namespace. So we'll do a vi ibp-scc.yaml, so IBM blockchain platform uh, security context constraint. And you'll see that this one has already been filled in. Now, the reason for this is because I've just gone ahead and copied it over from the IBM documentation as I'm not planning on making any changes to it. Uh, and if you guys are not planning on making any changes to it either, I'd advise that you just go ahead and click that link in the description to copy the YAML just straight in to just avoid any um, you know mistypes or, or spelling mistakes that might throw your YAML out of place. So as that's done, we'll just uh, exit without saving. And what we now need to do is actually apply that security constraint to our namespace. So we do an OC apply dash F IBP and we should auto complete that and then dash N with the namespace we'll do blockchain demo. And we can see that that's configured successfully. And what we then need to do is a little bit of role based access control. So we do an OC ADM policy add dash SCC dash to dash user blockchain demo. And then we do a system colon service accounts uh, colon and then again blockchain demo. And we can see that that's been added successfully. So what we can then do after applying uh, the security context constraint and uh, you know uh, adding the role based access control is just close that terminal down again for now, go back to our main UI, go to workloads and what we now want to do is create a new pool secret. 
So the reason that we want to do this is so that we can pull uh, the container images uh, from the registry for the uh, IBM, the pre-built IBM container images. So we need to switch projects and go to all projects quickly and search for pull secret and just click on it and go to the YAML. And we don't care about any of this, but we just want to copy those bottom four lines um, so that when we create our new credential, we can just paste that straight in. So once that's copied, we can go back to secrets, make sure that we're in the right namespace so we can switch back to blockchain demo and then create a new secret from YAML. So we can delete these bottom four lines as they're not important to us and we can paste that data that we've just copied over um, from the existing secret and we want to give it a new name. So we'll... You know, it's a registry credential, so we'll give it the name reg cred, and it's been created in the right namespace, so that all looks great. So once that's created, we can then go back to installed operators and actually click on the IBM blockchain uh, operator and just have a first look at some of the APIs that are available. So we have uh, IBM certificate authorities, of course, you know, to actually uh, onboard essentially identities uh, to your private blockchain. Um, the orderer, uh, the peers, but the thing that we actually care about, at least to get started, is the console itself. So the console is essentially the uh, central tool you can use to manage and deploy uh, all of the objects within your um, IBM blockchain platform uh, deployment. Um, and although you can also deploy them through the UI, the console just centralizes everything and gives it that um, kind of IBM blockchain platform focus and context that you don't get by deploying it through the OpenShift UI. Um, so we'll just go ahead and create that instance and we'll do it from a YAML view just so we can see exactly what we're doing as opposed to the form view. And uh, essentially we can see that the namespace is fine, the name doesn't need to be changed. And the first thing that we actually wanna change is the license. So we wanna go from uh, not accepting the license to accepting the license. We can see that service account name that we added earlier. We can see the reg cred, we can see the registry URL that we're gonna be pulling the images from. And then we wanna go down here and just change uh, the password and email. So we'll just use a simple password to start because when you actually log into the portal for the first time um, it'll ask you to change your admin password anyway so we'll just do red hat one two three and that won't be stored in plain text anyway um, and then we have to the last thing we have to change is the domain so the there are a couple of ways of getting your domain but the easiest if you're following this demonstration along is just to use the url at the top of your screen and copy all the way from the break of the console dash openshift dash console, so in this case apps, all the way to the end uh, of the dot com. So you just copy that and paste that in the domain, um, and that will essentially give us the uh, hosting URL for our uh, IBM con uh, console. So um, when we, it will automatically create the root, um, and it'll have a prefix as you'd expect, but then the end of that will be apps.cluster dot d4da in this case so we can create that now and we can see that that has created here but if we actually go to the developer view we can take a look at the topology for the first time and see that the ibm blockchain console uh, which is what we just created is currently initializing and is not quite ready yet but you can see those routes like i mentioned so blockchain dash demo dash ibp console so um, we can see that that's ready and we can also see the operator here so what we're essentially now waiting for is to see that the uh, console is ready to go. And there's two ways we can do this. One is just waiting to see uh, essentially this light blue turn into a dark blue like that. Or alternatively, we can get the terminal back up. We know that we're in the right project because we checked earlier and we can do an OC get pods and just see uh, exactly what is going on. So we can see that two out of four uh, are currently ready, um, but it's only been going on for 45 seconds. And this can take anywhere from about a minute and a half to five minutes, depending on your cluster. Um, if we wanted to just quickly check what was actually happening, we can do an OC describe pods, and we can see exactly what's going on. Um, however, it seems to be going fairly well. So if you just do an OC get pods, we can see now it's three out of four, um, and any second now it should uh, be completely up and running and we can just click on one of the routes and check um, to see if the console is up and running properly um, and log in for the first time and change that password. So if we just check again, we can now see that it's four out of four 
and we can click on the route itself. So you can click here or you can click on routes and you'd be taken to uh, this privacy error, which will close that terminal as well. So you can actually see the screen. But for this, we'll just go and proceed uh, ahead. So we know that there's nothing dangerous and we'll just go ahead and enter those details that we entered in the YAML earlier. So we'll go uh, for the email and then the password. So here you can see that uh, we're then prompted to change the password, like I said, so we just enter the, pro uh, the previous password um, and go ahead and just create a new secure password and click change and then it'll just ask us to log in again with the new credentials. So go ahead and do that. And from here, you can see that we're now within the IBM blockchain platform console itself. Um, so we can see that we have the nodes, the channels, smart contracts, the you know wallet, none of this set up yet, the organizations and users. And we can see that the only actual user so far is, of course, myself. Um, but if we just go back to the nodes, um, I just make I just start uh, and take the first step in actually uh, setting up the blockchain itself, just so you can see what it looks like within the topology. Um, and of course that first step is creating a certificate authority. So if we just add a certificate authority, click there, we'll create a new one and we'll just call it uh, db-ow, um, the enroll ID, we just do ow-rh. Um, and then for the secret, we can create the secret. So we'll just do, uh, that um, and now we can click next we don't want any of the advanced deployment options and we can just have a quick summary of our certificate authority and that's all fine I'm just doing it to show what it looks like from the actual topology view so you can see here you can now manage that certificate authority immediately from the console itself view info and usage um, and just see exactly what's going on but also from the actual topology view you can see that that uh, that's uh, certificate authority is now initialized and again and if we bring the terminal back up and we do an OC get pods, we can see that it's just uh, initializing still um, and just getting ready to run. So that just shows how quickly, how easily you can get up and running with IBM blockchain platform. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and uh, all the best with your blockchain deployments.